Hello and good morning. Here is my Cinemagraph. This video will show you how to edit a looping video in After Effects in order to have one half of the screen show a moving video and another half of the screen showing a still image, all from the same video clip. Um, I will warn you, this will not kind of show you everything you need to know if you don't already have a looping clip. Um, I just wanted to make a quick After Effects video to show people uh, kind of how to get started. So let's do it. Here's After Effects. Here's my finder. Here is my video clip. Um, one thing I'll say about it is that it's already been edited a little bit. I have sped it up and I've also looped it perfectly. Um, so you'll see the clip of me moving very quickly. It's probably at like 200% or so. So in order to get this video into After Effects, I've got a empty After Effects project here in the background. I'm going to just click and drag this win this video into the project window in After Effects. That will add that to the project window. Uh, next thing I need to do is make a new composition using this as kind of the basis. Um, what I mean by that, normally we go into the composition menu and choose new composition. For this, I'm going to drag this video onto this button here, which will also create a new composition. When you do it this way, it will take all the resolution of the video, the frame rate, and um, use what is inside the video already. So it's all set, ready to go. And now I have a composition called Four Second Loop, named after my video, and it's put the video in my timeline here. And if I hit the spacebar to play it, you'll see it loop. There we go. Okay, so first thing I want to do is duplicate this video. So one layer is going to show the still image, one layer is going to show the video. To duplicate the video, select it in the timeline. So you have to like click on this track here, on the layer. And then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command D. That duplicates the video. Okay. Um, the way it's going to work is the still image will be on the bottom, so I'm going to select the bottom layer, hit return. I'm going to call this, well, we'll call it still. And I'm going to select my top layer, hit return, call it moving. Okay. So on my still layer here on the bottom, I'll select that, and I'm going to go under the layer menu here. The very top of the screen, come down about this far under time, and then choose freeze frame. So I'll leave that up for a second. You can see I'm in the layer menu, time, and then the freeze frame option. Um, but before I do that, I need to find what I want to freeze. It's not this frame. So I'm going to bring my cursor to the left, and I know where it is. It's right here. I'm going to go my right hand my right elbow and my knee here. So this is the frame I want to freeze. So I'm going to go under layer, time, freeze frame. Okay. And if I play this, you will notice that nothing has changed. The reason is because my still layer is on the bottom, hid by the moving layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mask to the moving layer that will show the still layer below. Um, yeah, I'll hit the space bar. And now what I'm going to do is, just as a reference, I'm going to go back to this frame. You can see where I did my freeze frame here on the bottom. Um, so essentially, I'm going to come up to my pen tool here. So if we look next to the shape tool, the rectangle tool, and the toolbar, there's a pen tool. With the pen tool, I'm just going to create a box that surrounds the skull here. Um, and you need to make sure that you are on the top layer, working on the top layer. So I'm going to click on my top layer, the moving layer, and we're going to highlight the area that we want to keep moving. So because I want the skull to keep moving, I'm going to create a box around that skull. Um, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, Command minus. Oh, too far. Let's go to like 33%. Okay, and I'm going to start by clicking outside this window because I want to 
select, and you notice I had like cars driving by, so you see it flashing. Um, so I'm gonna keep some of that flashing. And the box I make is essentially gonna cover up from here to here, and then I'm gonna kind of click around here and make this little box that just shows the skull. So I'll start by clicking up in this area. It creates this little square, and now I'll watch if I click down here. So now I'll come over and click here and here. And I think I'm just gonna go like up into here, just clicking through, clicking around, and then whoops, 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 whoops. So I noticed a lot of people doing this in class. They hit the scroll wheel accidentally, and they don't know where their composition went. Um, essentially, you zoomed out. Right now we're at 4.2%, so I'm gonna click on this pop-up window and choose Fit, and then I'm even gonna zoom out a little bit. There we go. So here's where I left off last. I'm gonna keep clicking. I'm just gonna kind of follow this fold up and click out of the frame, out of the composition. I'm gonna zoom out a little more by hitting the command minus. Uh, what I need to do is close this path. So once I've gone all the way around my selection, you finish by clicking here and notice that my pen tool has a little circle. That means that the loop is gonna get closed. The circle is gonna be closed. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna zoom in a little more and then hit the space bar to play. And you'll see I've got this skull spinning. I'm perfectly still. Um, everything's rendered. And it's looking pretty good so far. If you notice though, over some frames you can see a really sharp line right here. And it's really noticeable in certain frames, like when it gets bright, right? Right there. I'm gonna click away from this. Okay, so look at that area. So that's kind of like a dead giveaway that I've done some editing here. Um, so one thing to kind of clean up your selection is to look in the layer that is moving where your mask is. So I'm going to click on this little triangle twirly. Um, inside the moving layer is a mask layer. Under masks, it shows me all my different masks. Um, I just have one. I'm going to open up this one. And there's an option to feather this shape here, or the mask. I'm going to turn this up to about 20 pixels. And we'll click away from there again. And you'll notice it's way less prominent. And to show you what's going on in here, I'm going to close this layer. And I'm going to hide the bottom layer by clicking on the eyeball under the still layer. When I do that, it will show me how my mask is working. You can see there's a nice kind of feathered edge if we zoom in. Um, if I didn't have that feather on, so I'll turn the feather down. You can see it is a hard edge. Uh, if I can click away. Oh, I know what to do, sorry. There's this little blue button here. Um, this will show the path and turn off. So you can see right now it's very sharp. But if I turn up the feather at about 20 pixels, it's nice and soft and you won't be able to see. Okay, so now I'm going to view my bottom layer again by clicking on the eyeball. Hit play, and there we go. Cinemagraph done. Ready to render. File, export. Whoops, add to render queue. And remember, I always like to click on the little link here where it says output to. Click on this so I know where it's going, what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna cancel that. Um, but yeah, you know what to do from there. Hit render, bring it into Photoshop, make a GIF. Um, enjoy. We'll see you later. Good night.